Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose. So, Xbox Game Pass has been busy over the last week, and in fact, just yesterday we talked about eight games heading over to Xbox Game Pass for the second half of the month of March, and well, that's actually grown even more today. That ID at Xbox event did take place today, and while I'm not necessarily a big fan of the format per se, well, they did talk about 13 different games heading over to Xbox Game Pass day one. One of which I think you are going to be really excited about, so we're going to talk about that later on in the video. And then also, Elden Ring. Yeah, Elden Ring, despite all of the controversy surrounding this game and whether or not it should offer options and maybe it's missing out on cells because it doesn't have difficulty options. Well, about that, Elden Ring has now become one of the fastest selling games of all time, so we're going to talk about that one as well. With that said, if you like the video, make sure to hit that bell notification, subscribe, and like button. I greatly appreciate it, and it helps out the channel a ton. But with that said, let's go and jump right into things, starting off with the Nintendo 3DS. Unfortunately, as we all know by this point, Nintendo has decided that they're going to go ahead and close the 3DS and the Nintendo Wii U eShop in March of 2023. Now, there are different milestones to this as well, because on May 23rd, you'll no longer be able to add funds with your credit card, and then on August 29th, you'll no longer be able to use eShop cards to add funds. So right now is probably going to be the best time to pick up games, especially for those games that are either hard to find physically at an affordable price or for games that are just simply only available through that digital storefront. So with that in mind, Capcom is actually one of the first publishers at bat here, offering a very nice sell over on the 3DS eShop. And I'm going to include a list here, but as you can see, I mean, this includes games such as the Phoenix Wright games, you have Resident Evil Revelations, Super Street Fighter 4, there's Mega Man Legacy Collection, a couple of Monster Hunter games as well. And all of these are going for a very nice discount, especially for those Phoenix Wright games i believe these games are actually available only through the digital storefront so these games will disappear forever after the eShop closes so being able to get the entire trilogy for just $11.99 this is an absolute steal and these are good games as well Next up, we do have some new information on EA Play Live, which often correlates with E3. Now, there are some questions surrounding E3 this year, obviously, but we did hear last week that they were sending out emails to some different developers, so we should start to hear a little bit more about E3 in the coming months and who will be participating and who won't be. Well, it does look like EA will not be participating this year, as they did share a statement with IGN that says this. We love EA Play Live as it's our way of connecting with our players and sharing what's new with all of you. However, this year things aren't lining up to show you everything on one date. We have exciting things happening at our world-class studios and this year will reveal much more about these projects when the time is right for each of them. We look forward to spending time with you throughout the year. So there you have it, EA will not be doing their big EA Play Live event this year, but instead it sounds like they're going to be announcing things a little bit more randomly throughout 2022. Really though, this just kind of comes off as yet another big publisher taking a step back from E3 and instead just taking their own path and announcing games when they are ready to completely show them. Now that's kind of the thing when it comes to EA though, because you have those annual franchises such as FIFA and Madden, and while those games are very successful and I like sports myself, but at the same time, they're not exactly the most exciting showcases in the world. So they could just reveal these trailers at random times. I'm sure that they would still have a ton of success, regardless of if they're at some type of an event or not. When they are ready to show some of their bigger games, though, such as Mass Effect 4, you have Dragon Age in development, and then also Dead Space. Maybe they'll do some type of an event for those games in the future, but it doesn't look like that they're necessarily confined to just those summer months like we have seen in in the past. Now we also got a small update on the initiative and this is something that we talked about yesterday as it is being reported that around 34 developers have left that studio over the last 12 months which coincides with Crystal Dynamics coming in to work on the Perfect Dark reboot. Now when you first hear this story 
that does not sound all that great. It's not a good look, to say the least, and this does include several key positions. But when I read that article, I noticed something that a lot of people seem to be overlooking, and that is what Daryl Gallagher, the head of the studio, said in response to this situation. He very specifically said that in creating the initiative, we set out to leverage co-developer partnerships to achieve our ambitions. Now, what that means is that it was always their plan to bring on another developer. So that's something that I pointed out yesterday. And well, today we actually got a confirmation on that from Video Game Chronicle's very own Andy Robinson. Andy Robinson and I did have some interactions today on Twitter about this topic. And by the way, I have to say that I greatly respect Andy Robinson and the Video Game Chronicles. I think that they do an absolutely astounding job. And really, anytime you look in the description below, there's a good chance that you're going to see one of my sources come from Video Game Chronicles because I think they do such a great job. Nonetheless, we did have a discussion on Twitter where he said that Crystal Dynamics is essentially leading this project now. And I pointed out that according to the head of the studio over at the initiative, that basically did seem to be the goal. So we did continue to discuss this and he did say that the plan as I understand it was always to work with a co-developer, yes, which I believe it was doing with certain affinity until last year as two separate teams. But the CD relationship is completely different according to my sources. Now that's interesting because he reveals a few different things here. One, he does acknowledge that that was the initiative's plan all along to bring on a co-developer eventually. The other part about this though is that he revealed that certain affinity was actually helping out with Perfect Dark just a year ago, whereas Crystal Dynamics has a completely different relationship here. And I actually do 100% agree with him in this situation. And what I mean by that is that yes, they have a different relationship because, well, Certain Affinity is a support studio. That is what they specialize in where developers will outsource their game for them to help out. This is pretty typical in development, and in fact, we've seen Microsoft work with Certain Affinity on several occasions, especially with the Halo franchise. So that's not really all that surprising. Whereas with Crystal Dynamics, this is a big and very talented studio, and they listed this as a co-developer. Not a support studio, but this is co-development. So yes, their relationship is very different, but again, it looks like that that was the plan all along. The reason I bring this up though is because it sounds like Crystal Dynamics coming in isn't necessarily linked to troubled development, but rather it was their initial plans. And then as for the departures, as also talked about in this article, the departures over at the initiative actually coincides with them bringing in Crystal Dynamics. So they didn't leave the company before Crystal Dynamics, but rather after. And what that tells me is that maybe not everybody was thrilled with Crystal Dynamics coming in to take such a large role on Perfect Dark. As some of the senior developers have stated, they wanted more autonomy and with Crystal Dynamics coming in, that kind of goes against that. So I do feel like that there was a little bit more to this story, so I wanted to quickly talk about it, but I will just kind of leave with this. It does seem like the initiative, if it is true, that their original plans was always to bring on a co-developer, it seems like the initiative is a very different studio in the sense that really it seems like their name was quite deliberate. They quite literally initiate a project. Speaking of Xbox though, we did have that ID at Xbox in the event today, and this is something that we talked about last week, and I did note that if you are an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, you might want to pay attention to this event, and that very much was the case after all. They did talk about 20 different games here, including 13 games, heading over to Xbox Game Pass day one. Yeah, that's right, 13 more games, and actually, some of them will be available this month in March. So what I'm gonna do here is first take a look at all the games that was announced for Xbox Game Pass, and then after that, we'll talk about some of the different highlights because I can't talk about all 13 games as it would just take far too long to do that. But nonetheless, they did announce Immortality, which is a mystery game coming from the Her Story creator that's coming over to Game Pass, then Chinatown Detective Agency, Trek to Yomi. That one definitely looks really interesting. We saw that one over at PlayStation state of play here recently then escape academy which is this really unique puzzle game that has you escaping different escape rooms also shredders which is a snowboarding game then you have flintlock siege of dawn you also have floppy night which is being described as advanced wars with cards that does sound quite interesting then paradise killer kraken academy citizen sleeper beacon pines and then we've talked about this one before but crusader kings 3 had a big presence here at id at xbox oh and then the big one and this is the really exciting one because it's actually going to be available on Xbox Game Pass like right now and that would be Tunic. 
yes, Tunic, the game that we have been hearing about for years and years, that Zelda-like game that has such a beautiful art style. Fans have been hyped for this game for such a long time, and not only is it available today, but it was also announced that it is releasing directly into Xbox Game Pass. So as soon as you're done with this video, if you're not already busy with something like, I don't know, Elden Ring, then you can go check out Tunic. And to just add to the good news, I know this game has been highly anticipated for years and years, and it does look like the wait was well worth it. Reviews did start to roll out today, and it currently has an 87 overall score on Metacritic as of this recording. It is being described as one of the most enjoyable games in an already stacked year for 2022. Now, there's a few other games here that did stand out to me, though. One being Trek to Yomi. This is a game that was showcased at State of Play here recently, and it does look like a really good hack and slash style of game. I like the art style here quite a bit, and I did reveal that it will be releasing this spring. Another game, though, that I haven't seen much of before, though, would be Escape Academy. They did show quite a bit of gameplay on this one, but this is a really interesting puzzle style of game where you're escaping these different escape rooms. It seems like the puzzles are quite cleverly done, and you do have a time limit to go up against, so there's going to be some pressure to actually solve these puzzles in a specific time frame, which I think is going to be quite interesting. It also does have a multiplayer aspect, so I do think that this one is worth keeping an eye on. And then last but not least, which is a game that we talked about just a couple days ago, which would be Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. They did once again talk about this game today, and while they didn't necessarily reveal any type of gameplay, there was an interesting update that I thought I'd at least kind of go over here, and they did say that the cinematic trailer completely represents what this game looks like. They did say that this trailer was made using in-engine, and that is a very good thing to hear because that trailer did look really good. They do say that this is kind of them taking things to the next level, and as I've said previously, they did an excellent job with Ashen. It's a very good Souls-like game. It had a beautiful art style, but it does seem like Flintlock here it seems like they're taking a big step up here with this open world action RPG. Very excited to see more on this one, but it is supposed to release sometime in 2022. Nonetheless, this was a good event for Xbox Game Pass subscribers as several interesting games will be releasing throughout 2022, including the much anticipated Tunic that you can actually play right now. Now, speaking of games that you can play right now, I think a lot of us are probably playing Elden Ring. I think by this point, it's been pretty evident that Elden Ring has been very successful. But well, about that, some official numbers, in fact, came out today and not only has it been successful, but it's actually now officially one of the fastest selling games of all time, period. That is right, a From Software game known for their just brutal difficulty is one of the fastest selling games of all time. It is now official, they did reveal today that Elden Ring so far has sold 12 million units in just 18 days. That is some Call of Duty level type of numbers right there. It is absolutely insane what this game is doing. And this is just the first 18 days. And I mean, it is just so cool to see a From Software game have this type of mainstream success. They're being rewarded for just such a masterpiece of a game, which I'll kind of get back to here in just a moment. But to just kind of put things into perspective on how insane this is, Daniel Ahmad over on Twitter did point out that the Dark Souls series hadn't even sold 12 million units as a whole until Dark Souls 3 came out. Now, Dark Souls 3 did sell very well. It ended up selling 12 million units total. But as he pointed out, that took them four years to do, whereas this... They did that in just 18 days. So it is absolutely crystal clear by this point that the soul genre is growing. And a big part of that is because they continue to meet expectations. Despite there being some controversy about whether or not they should have difficulty options, From Software does not break their promise when it comes to their community. They have certain expectations and every single time From Software delivers with excellent games. And that definitely shows with Elden Ring. But yes, I mean, they have met every bit of their expectations when it comes to this game. I mean, leading up to the release of Elden Ring, there was so much excitement for this game because you have From Software, which I mean, time in and time again, they have made fantastic games. They basically created their own genre, being the Soulsborne genre. But then there was also George R.R. R. Martin, which has his name linked to this game as well. So here you have George R.R. R. Martin, the author of Song of Ice and Fire, or better known as Game of Thrones. And then you have Miyazaki over at From Software working on this game, and then meshing it all together into this open world experience with the Soulsborne formula. On paper, 
it sounded great. And then when we actually played it, it wasn't like Cyberpunk 2077 where it didn't meet expectations. No, it turned out to be an absolute masterpiece. And that's kind of the thing because you look over the last couple of months and you look at all the games that's been releasing and it is unbelievable to think that all of these games have released back to back so back on january 28th we had pokemon legends arceus that was a great game then a couple weeks later we had horizon forbidden west that is another great game and then shortly after that we have elden ring which is just an absolute masterpiece so i mean elden ring had some competition here and still it sold 12 million units just big congrats to from software and this is such a well deserved accomplishment really elden ring in, in my opinion is an absolute masterpiece I, I have been absolutely addicted to this game since i first started playing it Let's go take a look at the poll of the day, though, and this goes back to the topic of the initiative once again, because I wanted to know, with the most recent report of the initiative losing developers, are you concerned about Perfect Dark? And, well, you are actually very split on this one, with 42% of you saying yes, you are concerned, while 46% of you said no. Now, I did see in the comments that some of you all said that you're not necessarily concerned with Perfect Dark, but rather you're concerned with the future of the initiative because this is more of a Crystal Dynamics game. So I guess that that is an option as well. But yeah, I mean, you all definitely seem very split on this right now, and I can absolutely understand it. That report is most certainly not a good look and in an ideal world the initiative would have retained a lot of that talent regardless on whether or not crystal dynamics came in to work on perfect dark so it's not a good look but as of this moment i'm not necessarily concerned about it i think that if a lot of the staff would have departed the initiative before crystal dynamics came in i would have been more concerned about that because that means that they would have brought Crystal Dynamics in because they were having trouble with development. But because most of the departures were after Crystal Dynamics joined and it looks like co-development was always in the initiative's original plans, I'm not necessarily overly concerned about things right now. And for that matter, I do firmly believe that Crystal Dynamics is the perfect fit for Perfect Dark, as I've said in the past. I believe this for a few different reasons, one being that Daryl Gallagher, the head of the initiative, has worked with Crystal Dynamics in the past. Also, they did a fantastic job rebooting a female-led game being Tomb Raider, and also Crystal Dynamics, they're just simply a very talented studio. Now, they didn't exactly show that with the Avengers, and a lot of that comes down to Square Enix kind of forcing a games-as-a-service type of game when it really should not probably not have been. But if they just kind of stick with more of a single-player-driven experience in Perfect Dark, I have a lot more confidence in something like that when it comes to Crystal Dynamics. So, no, I'm not necessarily overly concerned, but at the same time, I know how this topic looks so i understand why some of you all would be anyways though that's it for this episode but if you like the video don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this also if you'd like to support the channel through patreon thank you for making this content possible peace out